Welcome back to Nanny B's Story Time. We are still at week four, and I hope you have your Bibles with you. Um, if so, you need to be in Exodus, big number 34. So Genesis is the first book of the Bible, Exodus is the second, and then find big number 34. And I'm going to tell you which verses we're going to read. We're not going to do the whole chapter. And um, so um, we're going to get started. And I just, hold on. All right. I lost an earring. That's going to remind me to pick the other one up and find it. So big number 34 in Exodus. And so we're going to be talking about Moses is talking with God up on Mount Sinai. If y'all remember um, in our previous ones, um, they were wandering in the wilderness. They had fled Egypt, all the 10 plagues that came and Pharaoh finally let them go. And they show up at Mount Sinai. And Moses goes and talks to God. And remember, God told them, "Don't. Uh, no one else can approach the mountain, be near it, those kind of things. And he gave them the Ten Commandments. And then Mos God told Moses, you know, they're already messed up. They have already made a golden calf, and they're down there worshiping. So Moses comes down the mountain, sees it, drops it. He gets angry. So the Ten Commandments have bro been broken, actually, literally. And, and figuratively and so um he you know so he has to get onto the children of israel because they were worshiping this idol which is one of the commandments second one and so um now moses has gone back up and we're going to see what um god is going to tell him so very first verse now the lord said to moses cut out for yourself two stone tablets like the former ones because they got broke and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets, which you shattered. So we're going to have a redo. Um, the first set of ten stone tablets got messed up. They got broken, um, shattered. So cut out the stones. I will rewrite. Sometimes you got to do that in your school sometimes when you mess up. And so the children of Israel messed up. Moses got angry, broke them. So we are now... He's going to take them back up on the mountain and God's going to rewrite the stone tablets again. So look down at number five. So he does that. In verse five, the Lord descended in a cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord, the he being Moses. Verse six, then the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. Verse 7, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, that's sin, transgression, that's a sin, and sin. So it's listing a different kinds of sin, the transgression, the iniquity, and sin. And he tells us that he forgives those. Yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren for the third and fourth generation. So here we see Moses is back on top of the mountain um he's got to bring the stone tablets for god to write a second time and god comes down in a cloud and passes before him and i want you to key in it's it has nothing to do but on some of the characteristics that we we see about god he is compassionate he is gracious he extends grace grace is getting what you don't deserve Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. So when you do something wrong and you know you're supposed to get grounded, or in my days, we got spankings for it, um, had to go get the switch, those kind of things. Mercy is when you don't get that. Grace is when you get something that you don't even deserve. Um, abounding in loving kindness. Think of that word, loving kindness. It's got love and kindness mashed together. It's awesomeness. And truth. And then it says... Um, he forgives the sin, the iniquity, the transgressions, the bad things we do, the, the, just the sin in our lives. But, and I want adults to kick, kick in and hear this one. He will not leave the, the guilty unpunished and he will punish your children and your grandchildren to the third and the fourth generation. So we have to be careful as adults on what we do. Because it can affect our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, and our great-great-grandchildren. And so, um, but he is loving, kind, gracious, but he is also a just God, which means the sin has to be punished. And so, now, look down. 
we're going to jump all the way to 28, little number 28. So find it and says, and so there, so he was there with the Lord. This is Moses for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. This is not Noah on the ark. This is Moses on the mountain, but it's still the same time. 40 days and 40 nights, he did not eat bread or drink water, and he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant of the, the Ten Commandments. So he's up there for 40 days, 40 nights. The last time he was up there, Aaron ended up making the golden calf, and they started worshiping. They learned their lesson, so he's still up there on the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights. He comes down, look at verse 29. And it came about when Moses was coming down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand as he was coming down from the mountain that Moses did not know that his skin of his face shone because of his speaking with God. All right. And it says, and when Moses had, verse 33. Okay, no, let me back up. Um Verse 30, so when Aaron and all the sons of Israel saw Moses and behold, the skin of his face shone, they were afraid to come near him because he had spent time with God. It was showing up on his face. The glory of God was so bright that it actually physically changed how Moses' face looked because when he went up on the mountain, it didn't look like this. He comes down out, out the mountain after spending 40 days and 40 nights with God. And his face is now radiating the glory of God. And so um, verse 33, when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. So this is what he ended up doing. We're having to wear masks. That's because of coronavirus and those kind of things, not because of the glory. But imagine if people could tell that you spent time with God and you had to cover your face like we're having to wear the masks. And so, um, you know, I kind of got to thinking, you, a lot of times you can tell who's gone out to the on the lake or gone to the beach because they come back and either they use suntan lotion and they're a glowing dark tan or they didn't use suntan lotion and fell asleep in the sun or whatever and they're as red as a lobster. So you can tell where they've been because of their face and their skin, either they're sunburned or they have the nice tan. And so Moses's face was kind of the same way. They knew he had been with God and it freaked them out. And so he started wearing a veil when he was around the children of Israel. And then when he'd go up on the mountain, he'd take the veil off and talk with God and get the words that God commanded. All right. And so, um, talking about so his his god is just that holy um that it physically changed the way moses's countenance the way his face looked and so we're talking today on um revering honoring giving glory to god's name not using it in a bad way in an unholy way so one of the things that i want to think about is uh, many times we will um, have something happen and, and you watch these shows, especially when they're getting makeovers on their house or, you know, they're given a new car and what do they do? They go, Oh my God. Okay. That's using God's name in vain. And so one of the ways that, that they, we, if we get in the habit of doing that is to consciously finish the statement because just saying, Oh my God is using his name in an unholy way. So we can finish the statement that brings glory to God and say, oh my God, thank you so much for being so good to me. Or, oh my God, you are awesome and amazing. You are wonderful. Oh my God, look at the creation around me that you have made with just speaking. Or, or finish the statement. If you're going to use that, finish the statement until you can get out of the habit of realizing that you're using God's name in vain. Um, the other is using Jesus's name in vain, which we find a lot of times that has become the cuss word for the day. Um, and, you know, but would you want your name used the way that it's used in TV shows and in movies or, or maybe even in your house or your neighbors? You know, we don't go, Kobe Bryant. They'd be going, what? But yet and still people think no, nothing about using Jesus who died for our sins and died on the cross, who is the son of God, who is God and unholy. We think of nothing. George Washington, you know, 
okay? You're going to have some strange looks. Start doing that, and maybe people will start keying in that I need to be thinking about the name that I am using in either an angry way or a frustrated way. Um, we don't, you know, you hit your, your thumb with a hammer. We don't go, Chris Pratt. So think about the words you're saying, the name you're saying. Would you want your name used that way? No, we would not. And if we are in the habit of using that, change it up. Use somebody else's name. Um, Chris Pratt, George Washington, Betsy Ross, find somebody else, but not the savior of the world who died for the sins of all mankind. And so, um, and that will help us to keep commandment number three, which is to revere God's name and keep it holy. And so, um, be back in a little bit for mission time.